Well, we haven't actually seen how much this deck, this boat leaks because it's been under cover for many years. Um, we've just taken that cover off. We've rebedded all the staunchions. There's a big dark cloud coming over us. So this is gonna be the first time if it does actually rain on the boat, we're gonna find out where she leaks and if she's still leaking, so. Close the hatch. Good morning, Independence. All right, well, we bought a boat that was leaky. You all know that. Uh, it's got a teak deck that is screwed in. Uh, it was under a tent for a reason, we're guessing, because it was here to do a refit to do all the teak decks and the capping rails. And there's a lot of rotted wood all throughout the aft cabin and throughout the insides of the cupboards throughout the boat. So over the last month we've replaced all of that rotted wood and we've got in underneath all of the uh, all the staunchions and all of the things that are through bolted and we've uh, we've rebedded everything we've replaced the rot just finishing off making the aft cabin look pretty and then we're sort of moving on because we are splashing in five days time so this phase one is nearly completed hello that brings me to the conversation of today is we we're hoping that by rebedding all of the through bolt structures like the staunchions, the bollards, by rebedding them, we we're hoping to make the water, the boat watertight. Although last night we had our first absolute downpour. It bucketed, literally like four inches. There's a bucket outside that's literally got four inches of water in it. So four inches of rain has definitely caused a few things to see where there's going to be any leaks and um, going through all the sorts of areas, the head sail track. And unfortunately, it appears that that is leaking in a few places. Also, inside the cupboard that had caused a whole heap of rot, in here there seems to be water dripping through a couple of old drill holes. And if you go up on deck, these holes are nowhere to be seen. It sort of suggests that they've moved a staunchion or moved the, uh, it's actually like a little, just a U-bolt on top. It's where the furler, uh, block attaches to so where they threw bolted that it looks like they might have moved it and then the decks just covered up those previous holes because those previous holes are now tripping so there's a couple of water leaks around the joint although like see all of the wood that we have replaced it's all treated with epoxy and I'm not worried about more damage occurring I'm just pissed off that there's still water getting in the boat <laughs> <laughs> but of course it was to be expected, you know, you're never going to get all these leaks on uh, on the first attempt. The electricians are coming today. Today we have a big day of upgrading the power system on this vessel because we are changing. Currently we have 660 hours in the house bank and that is of AGM batteries and we are changing to lithium. And see, independence is a little bit different than Nanji because an independence has a lot more smarter systems and it has a whole heap of AC power, whereas Nanji didn't have that luxury. All we had was one small inverter. So uh, with independence, we have a generator, there's shore power, and there's 220 volt throughout the whole vessel. So there's a whole lot of AC power as well as DC power throughout the boat. We currently have a battery charger, which charges from AC charging the house bank. And we have an alternator, but the alternator on the motor is actually packed up. And so it needs to be rewound or, or rebuilt anyway. And we figured since we're really building up a massive large amount of lithium and the current external regulator is not suited for lithium of the alternator, it is only suited for lead acid AGM batteries. So we need to change out that regulator. And since the alternator is cactus, we've got a new alternator coming as well. So we're gonna have a DC DC charge from when the motor is running. So then we have ways of charging our lithium batteries through motoring, through the generator and through extra solar, which we'll put on and then the shore power. So there's a lot of power going on now with independence, if that all makes sense. I know it sounds pretty complicated, but I'm still getting my head around it a bit too. So um, so, we're in, so today the electricians are coming. We're gonna, they're gonna help me with the AC side of things. So we're gonna install a new alternator a new external regulator and temperature sensor because you need to monitor how much heat when you are charging your batteries. Uh, and then an, a, another Victron charger called an Orion charger, which means uh, that has the capability of when we DC, DC charging to charge the lithium house bank, but the, the startup battery bank is still lead acid batteries. 
So by having the Orion charger, you can then charge both types of batteries. That will ensure safe charging of both banks. It's pretty confusing. There's a lot going on. Big day ahead. Let's get into it. Just gotta wait for the electricians. <laughs> So this is where the current battery setup is, it's under the couch. You can see it sort of takes up this area. The hull, sort of the shape of it, sort of restricts, I guess, a little bit to uh, the amount of space there. But as you move this extra piece here, we've got the bilge, a manual bilge pump in there, but if I just move that over to the side and change the angles of that, build up a little divider, we've got all that extra space to put batteries in. So we are going to have a whole lot of power. To give you context, Nanji, we installed 300 amp hours of lithium and we had a whole heap of power. And we also had a whole heap of solar. So that's one thing that we do have to upgrade with independence is the solar, which will happen in the next month or two when we make some more money and save up and spend it all. Being in the boatyard and purchasing this boat has definitely, uh, has definitely tapped our resources and we're really, we are pushing it to the edge, uh, and but that's sort of what part of the journey is and part of the fun. If you don't take risks, there's no reward, you know, and we're not afraid to do a bit of work, and we want to work hard to make this boat our own, and that's exactly what we've been doing, and we're slowly transfer transferring it into a beautiful boat and a lovely home, which would take our family further and sail us around the world comfortably, and that's the whole plan behind this and behind the bigger boat, an extra cabin is to continue the journey on that we started with Nanji and continue the journey further west across the oceans and to arrive back into the Gold Coast Seaway where we departed from in 2017. So we've been sailing away from Australia for nearly six years now and none of this would have been possible without the help from creating videos and the support from our Froth family on Patreon and you guys who subscribe to the channel and enjoy our videos. It's only through creating videos and creating content that you guys enjoy watching. So thank you so much for doing that. Uh, it's allowed us to achieve so many goals. And now we've set a new, a new list and set a new bar, which we are trying our hardest to work towards. Uh, and that's all through the assistance of you. So thank you so much for watching. Thank you for subscribing. If you leave comments, Click the like button, all of those things help with the algorithm, help us with YouTube. Our Froth family over on Patreon have been able to assist us in, in helping for us to continue our journey and then for us to take this next leap of faith and into buying this bigger boat. So if you enjoy what you see and you are enjoying our videos, enjoying this journey that we are on, for as little as three bucks a month, you can sign up to our Patreon, get you get to watch our videos before anyone else. There's other little videos behind there. You do get a lot of extra rewards on the Patreon site. Uh, we just want to encourage people to help, to help support the videos, to help support our journey. Uh, everything that, that we earn at the moment pretty much goes back into the boat. <laughs> so you are helping to support our, our little path to sail further and make this vessel into something that she can be because she has so much potential and Slowly but surely, she's becoming the boat that we want. And after we do these little upgrades to these systems, we put her in the water, get her sailing, and we'll know what else we'll have to do uh, for the next big ocean leg. So this year, we really will be concentrating on making this boat perfect to get ready for the next early season of next year to then sail west and head across the Indian Ocean. We'll definitely do some sailing this year. We're not, like boat work is essential, but there's only so much boat work you can do without without losing the froth, you know? And it's all about the balance and you need to keep a balance. So we're definitely gonna be going sailing again soon. We can't wait to get in the water and test her out. But yeah, so anyway, basically just thank you everyone for watching and subscribing our Patreons. There's a link in the top of the description if you'd like to join up the Patreon. And otherwise we just, thank you very much and well, let's get busy. <laughs> Where are these electricians, man? They changed the alternator over. We, we're putting in a 170 amp Balmar alternator with an external 618 regulator, which is exactly what this thing here is over here. And so that can regulate the state of charge, the amount of amperage that's going through to our lithium bank and the starter bank. 
And then there's a temperature sensor to go onto the alternator so we can see the difference when it is charging. We know if it's cooking itself out and the temperature, what's going towards the batteries because we can't be cooking things. They tidied it up on the outside here with the bus bars. And then there's some big ass heavy duty fuses there. One will be for the windlass. The other one is to go to the control panel over at the nav station. Uh, because it's lithium bank, it needs to be protected by the fuse. And there's a circuit breaker after that fuse line for the, uh, for the windlass. Then from these buzz bars here is where the lithium battery banks will join. So then we need to have the exact same length cable from that buzz bar to each battery bank, which is very important for the state of charge of all the batteries. If you wonder back again Call my number, call my name The rest of the stuff from storage today was delivered. So we've already had the towels and the mattresses delivered a while ago, and now we've got all of the like boxes of stuff. So th I think that this boat was actually put into storage with the intention of coming back to it. Um, and over the years, it ended up going up for sale. And so we have a lot of just a, a lot of stuff from the boat that was left behind. So I'm just going through and deciding what we want to keep, what we want to throw away, and washing everything. There's a lot of things that, you know, we're just gonna keep. For example, like these are just plastic crates, you know, and there's no reason why we can't reuse these. So these are staying. Helping Lula? Yeah. We like the water jobs, don't we, Baba? Did you grow a beard? Yeah. <laughs> you grow a beard? Yeah, I want to go away a Okay, yeah. that's right. You can have a beard if you want to. I'll just wipe him off for a bit though. We've got all the witch covers and the covers for the hatches as well. Sick. That's a good find. So they'll go to the laundromat. This amazing blue rug, we might wash that <laughs> and throw it in the bin. <laughs> Why would you throw it? I don't want that. Ah, okay. Get rid of that. No, you can use it as a rag. Oh, this is so exciting. <laughs> All right. There is a heap of like neater sort of epoxy stuff, epoxy putty. Which would probably still be good. But we did do have a lot of this stuff already anyway. This boat was well loved. It's like got the essential stuff here, right? Some brand new melamine marine, business. marine plates. Wow. I'm so glad we didn't buy anything at the shop, did we? Yeah, bitching. Oh. Yeah, plates. <laughs> Excellent. They're good. Yeah, they'll be fine. Wash them. Yeah. Sailing books and charts and a dinghy pump. Call my number. the mammoth job of going through all of the boxes there were 15 big boxes that we had to go through and we've kind of broken it down into I would say roughly four containers left so there's the two gray ones here um, that are from storage and then we've got two containers here which is our stuff One's our stuff, one is like tools and stuff. So now we're up to putting everything onto the boat. There's a few days left until we splash. Um, so yeah, we're just moving on board. This is the Highfield CL340, uh, which is 3.4 meters long. We chose a much bigger vessel, so you know it is like your car, you want to be able to travel further, and that was the whole idea behind our last dinghy. But this time, because we've got a bigger boat, we can fit a bigger dinghy, so now we can travel further. 
<laughs> They've got a bigger dinghy, it's got that big deep V at the front, they ride really well so they can handle the fetch and the chop, that extra length gives you that smoother ride through that choppier condition, so uh, with a bigger motor on the back, this we can send it for so many miles to yeah. go exploring this. Yeah. Look at this little big boat. How many big boats have we got? Wow. Where do you live? Oh, Where do got... you live, Lula? Big boat. Yeah, yeah. big boat. <laughs> big boat. <laughs> <laughs> Think about how to pick it up so we don't uh, don't rub it or damage it in any way. She looks so nice. We've got a whole new davit system, so. Yeah, 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 it's bling it. It should be fine because the davit pickup points are. Uh, what did I say? Two four. Yeah. And this is well, no, two three, and this is like two one. So it's still, it's going to be on an angle in it a little bit. So it's still going to be rubbing on these points anyway. Put your so really, we could have got a bigger dinghy, so it was going in rather than going out. Okay. <laughs> Task I don't miss. Picking up the anchor. This is the last job though to do before we go into the cradle this afternoon. Do a little bit of anti fouling and splash tomorrow. Oh, definitely want to make sure the windlass works on this boat. See?